This is the Patriot on Television Nigerian. Our guest today is Professor Jerry Antony Agada, former principal, Government College Makudi, my principal who admitted me into college, one of the few principals who attained the principal special grade and welcomed the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, a President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at the time, to government college when we were still students. I had the privilege of shaking hands with the president when Professor Jerry Agatha was principal because we lined up and we were shaking him on the line. A retired permanent secretary, Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs and other ministries in Benue State, a former Minister of Education, Federal Republic of Nigeria, a former national president of National Association of Nigerian Authors, ANA, and currently the chairman of Civil Service Commission, Benue State. Professor Jerry Anthony Agada, please welcome to the Patriot. Thank you very much, Sandy. Yes. How are you doing? I'm fine. And you? I'm very good too. Good, good, good. <laughs> So, Happy to see you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us exactly how you feel, you know, in the lockdown and uh, in experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful experience. The, the truth of the matter is that uh, as old as I am, this is the first time of my experience in this type of situation where everybody is locked down. I mean, everywhere is locked down. You're not allowed to go out, and so on and so forth. And life is never the same since uh, the beginning of uh, this incident. So we are experiencing it, and we are hoping things will change for the better as soon as possible, so that uh, COVID-19 should be off completely, so that life will return to normal again. That's all right. I remember that uh, when we used to be students, yeah. and you used to come to the assembly, yeah. and you always address us as students. Yeah. I, I remember the word you used that, um, good morning students, <laughs> and all that, and you always tell you, you drive your white beetle, <laughs> That's right. and you always come neat and pack in front of your office. Mm -hmm. As students, we loved you so. That's right. And uh, when you say that at your age, mm. I don't even see you as old as you think. <laughs> I still see you as the principal that you used to stand in front. Can you tell us the secret behind? That's right. Yeah, um, you see young looks, how beautiful you're still looking young. That, that's right. I'm happy to have this question because it has taken my mind mm. back to the very good old days. Mm. You know, like you said, when I was your principal, mm. I would come to the assembly ground and address you people, morning students. Mm. And uh, I know how enthusiastic most of you were. Anytime I came to the assembly and I start speaking, and uh, you know, you were all feeling very excited mm. and so on and uh, so forth. And the truth of the matter is that um, even though I admitted you into Form 1 mm. in government college, mm. you know that I was already a teacher at Government College Kefi, you know, from 1974 up to 1976 when Benue State was created. It was after the creation of states that uh, we came down to Makodi on deployment. And so I was deployed to Government College. Fortunately, I was there before your daddy brought you to me. Who is my daddy? Uh, Mr. Sande. <laughs> Mr. Sande, who was my classmate. Mm -hmm. We were classmates mm -hmm. at uh, the National Technical Teachers College, Yaba. Mm -hmm. He was doing NC Technical, mm -hmm. and I was doing my own. Mm -hmm. We were classmates mm -hmm. from there. And it was after our graduation, I was posted to Government College, Kifi, where he, Sande, 
was posted to government college Pankshin. That's right. You know, mm. and uh, it was after the creation of state, state that we all came down here. Yeah. Yes, and then right. he brought you to me yes. to be admitted as my own student. Was it, was it small? Ah, you were very tiny. <laughs> I mean, nobody knew you could grow like this to become big and fat and all the rest. And of course, life that time was very interesting. Mm. For instance, I remember you said during your introduction, mm that at least I welcomed, you know, the then president, mm. military president, General Ibrahim Babangida. Yes. But let me take your mind back that Babangida was the second head of state that I welcomed to government college, Makode. Do you know that that time, in 1984, mm. particularly, General Buhari mm. was the then head of state. And you know, he visited the... Uh, uh, Makodi, Benue State that time. And you know that government college, Makodi, was the epicenter of everything that was happening in Benue State because Benue State was created in 1976. Mm. And uh, as we came down on deployment, mm. there were no structures like uh, maybe the Apeaku Stadium now or the IBB Square. Uh, in fact, it, everything was in government college. Because it was the premier college of uh, the state. So anytime anybody was visiting, like the head of state, the reception or whatever would be taking place on government college ground. And I remember as head of state when General Buhari visited Benue State, he was received at the reception ground in government college Makodi. That our beautiful pavilion. That your beautiful pavilion. The truth of the matter is. That pavilion was made into that, you know, beauty as a result of our preparation for receiving General Buhari. Wow. Yes, it was after, shortly after that visit that the coup took place and uh, he was overthrown. That was in 19, I think, 85 or something like that. And Babangida became the pre military president. And of course, uh, we were there. When Babangida came on a visit to Benway State, and the, one of the places he visited was Government College because it had been given a facelift in terms of renovation by the then governor of Benway State, General Fidelis Maka, mm. that time. So when Babangida came, he visited places that were, you know, renovated, like even this Civil Service Commission that time in 1991 was also newly built. So he visited here, visited government college, visited that Piakustan, visited IBV Square, and so on and so forth. And during his visit, you know, I had told you the students that we were going to welcome the president, yes. and you were all excited because you've never seen a president. I yes. told you, don't worry, he was going to come. Yes. So when the itinerary was prepared and he was to visit here, I made sure that he spoke with my students. Yes. But I, because I remember at the protocol office, I was told that no, he was not going to waste time, he was going to spend only five minutes mm. uh, when he uh, to government college because he had other places to visit and each place where he was spending five, five minutes. So he was only going to spend five minutes. I said, okay. But what I did and the trick I played was I arranged you students yes. on the assembly ground. And you nominated me, I was one of them. Okay, yeah. Yes. And uh, the two people should wait there. Yes. While I took the president around the places that uh, he was going to commission. In fact, we went straight to the dining hall, the newly renovated dining hall, when, when after he commissioned it and he was to go back. So I said, excuse me, sir, that is it possible to, to speak with my students because they are already waiting for you. He said, uh, he said, where are they? I said, they are on the uh, assembly ground. Mm. He said, how many are they in number? I said, there are about 2,000. Mm. He said, ah, why, why so many? Mm. And am I sure they are up to 2,000? I said, yes, sir. And it's because government college was being run as an exchange program student, uh, college where we had students from the other 19 northern states. Yes. So then, I said, yes, sir. And he said, am I sure? I said that every state in the north had students there. I said, yes, sir. And even that the current 
the current head boy of the college is an exchange student. He's an exchange student <laughs> from Niger <laughs> State. And you know Barangida. I know Barangida. He said, Am I sure? <laughs> I said, Yes. I said, Okay, let me take him to the ground there. That's right. By that time, all these his other aides, they were feeling uncomfortable because he was already spending more than the five minutes <laughs> which they had. But he said, I should take him to the assembly ground. So when we came to the assembly ground, and he saw the number of students yes. and the way they were yes. neatly dressed and waiting for him. Yes. He said that he was going to talk to them. And he came and he talked to you people. He remembered even in his own days when he was in government college, see government college, be that or whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that uh, he was as young as you people. Yes. In fact, he talked generally with you people. Mm -hmm. And before then, we had already crafted one very nice poem. Which I wrote for my yes, students, yes. You know, and the head boy came to read it out yes. for you. And when he read the 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 the, the poem, and then another student, Tefa Apa, yes, presented uh, his portrait, Portraits. which had been drawn by the Fine Arts Department yes. under Mr. Mr. Vis 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 Roma. Yes. So they presented the picture. He said, ah, "The students did this." I said, "Yes, I done by this one." He was so, in fact, Babangida spent almost 15 to 20 minutes, minutes on the ground talking with you people, interacting with you, like you see. Yes. He was shaking hands with all of us. And hands. he gave us 10 cows. He did. He, he did. declared 10 cows. It's 12, 12, 12 cows. cows. And we refused, and then, then you stopped <laughs> them from cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you the story now. He, he, after he spoke with you people and everything, then he said, he was donating 12 cows, yes. one for each month, for the 12 months of the year. And that uh, the principal of the college must be promoted to the next salary grade level. Grade level. By then I was already on level 15, mm. Mm -hmm. and the next level would have been level 16. And at the time, there was no cadre for principal special grade mm. in Benue State. Yes. So now that the president had directed that I should be promoted to the next level, what mm. did they do? Mm. They had no choice than to bring that cadre to Benue to State. Benue so State. incidentally, I was the first principal special grade yes. in Benue State. Yes. And uh, Baba Gida, you know, he interacted with you people, everybody was happy mm. and he left. And that was a watershed in in my experience as a, as a teacher, because it was during that visit that I was made principal special grade and brought my promotion also in what we call the cadre of principal special grade yeah, in Benue State. That was how it happened that time. And of course, you mentioned my B2. Yes, mm -hmm. I remember I bought my B2 in 1977. I told you I came down to Benue State in 1976. Mm -hmm. We were giving car loan. Mm -hmm. To, to buy cars, I bought the B to 3,400 naira at that time, brand new B2. And uh, even when I was living for further studies in 1979 in Britain, I packed it. When I came back by 1984 85, I still took my B2 and uh, I was using it. Even as your prince, I had the B2. Even when I was made principal social grade on level 16, I was still with my B2. And in fact, I continued with that B2 until I was posted to government college, Uton Con, as their principal at that time. 1993, I was still using the B2 until 1976, when I was appointed, 1996, 96. when I was appointed executive secretary, Benway State Examinations Board. Mm. But, uh, I came down to the board here. And I was given a 504, you know. <laughs> Even then, I had my, my B2. And people were saying, ah, this man. But I so liked the B2 that, mm. I, you know, and you know that there was no pride of any mm. type on my side other than to be doing my job. Mm. You remember, I was always with you students oh, in the hostel. In the hostel. You either I'm with you in the hostel, in the dining hall, in the, you know, mm. on the assembly ground. I was not giving you any breathing space for anything. You know, so that's why I said the way you asked the question brought all those mm -hmm. memories yeah. back to my mind. But that's how it happened. You and you used to have a bald hair. Oh yeah, I and did. then you had hair. Right. <laughs> can you remove your cap so we can yeah, see? Well, look at the 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 bald hair. The bald hair is still there. 
<laughs> you know, it's my mark. And you, people, <laughs> you people used to call me Papi Joe. Papi Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really wonderful having <laughs> to catch up with the old time. That's right. It's beautiful at the same time that mm. I'm meeting with my principal. That's right. Uh, who is my father's classmate yeah. at the same time. Yeah. We're going to make an exclusive on this. Okay. Because you're still alive. Mm -hmm. God has created, you know, uh, you mm -hmm. for a purpose. That's right. Your life is going to flourish yeah. and you're going to impact into more lives. That's right. It's a privilege that yeah. your son yeah. is coming to meet with you today, you know, and to interface with you. And that's right. Tell us something about your experience having mm -hmm. moved around mm -hmm. after being a principal that's and moving right. to different positions that's in right. Nigeria. Yes. Do the experience is very interesting. The truth of the matter is, as we are talking now, if I go anywhere today, whether I'm traveling at the airport, anywhere, majority of the people I see are my former students. Either they were my students from Government College Kefi yeah. or Government College Makodi. And you don't forget them? I don't forget. I, you know, I remember you people by your names. Yes. At least that's one gift that I have. Yes. Once you are my students, I know you by name. And wherever I meet them today, I, let me tell you that I contested governorship yes. of Benue State in the year 2007. And do you know that one of our contestants was uh, Gabriel Suswa? Yeah. And mind you, that Gabriel Suswa was my student in Government College, Makodi. Wow. You understand? <laughs> so you can see that even though he was my student mm -hmm. in Government College, after he finished and went to his various schools up to becoming a member of the uh, uh, Federal House of Rep and so on, before he came to contest the governorship, that time I had also risen through the ranks up to becoming a permanent secretary mm -hmm. in most of the ministries in Benue State and so on, before I retired to contest that governorship. So I contested with him, and uh, even though he defeated us, at least he recognized me and took me as his former principal. Mm -hmm. And that respect used to be there. Yeah. And even before Suswa, you know, Joshua Dari was a former governor too. Yes. Joshua Dari, governor yes. of Latu State. Jo Joshua was my student in government college in Makodi here, yes. 1977, 78, and all the, yeah. He was my student and he became the governor too. So you can see that. My former students were becoming governors and so on and, and so forth. Then aside from that, mm. if, you go, if you go to the House of Rep, to the Senate, to anywhere, you discover that majority of the people there were my former students. Even if you come to the State Executive Council, you discover that they are my former students. Majority of them are my former students. I'm like their father, you understand? And that respect is there. So also it is that, like I said, if you go to the air, any of the airports and I'm traveling somewhere, you see either this uh, immigration officer standing there, this one, they, they will see me and see that their principal has gone and they will do whatever. Very respected uh, yes. decision taken mm -hmm. that you decided to become a teacher mm -hmm. yes. as a matter of profession. Uh, that's right. And the joy of being a teacher, mm -hmm. I hope you have never regretted it. I will never regret it. And I tell people, you know some people, when you say, what do you want to be a teacher? They say, no, I don't want to be a teacher. They want to be customs officers, they want to be medical doctors, they want to be lawyers, this and that. If you mention teaching, they say, no, it's not better. I tell people, if I were to relive my life again, I still want to be a teacher because I have enjoyed my life as a teacher. There is nothing I want to, to say that I want to enjoy in life that I have not. I mean, I rose to become a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And not just a minister here and there, but minister of education. Mm. I mean, having served as a minister, what again have I not done? Mm. If you go to the Federal Executive Council, the president of the Federal Republic, is the chairman of the uh, uh, Federal Executive Council. So you see that even, even if I were a senator, mm. senators don't go to the Federal Executive no, Council. <laughs> if I were uh, uh, an ambassador, 
ambassadors don't go to the federal executive no. council, even though they represent the head of state in wherever, I mean oh, the president, yes. wherever they are serving. And even if I was in the House of Red, or wherever, you know. So to me, having served as a member of the federal executive, where decisions affecting the entire nation were being taken, I think I have gone to the height that I can go. Because you don't expect two, three people to be presidents at the same time. So as to say that, ah, because you know, I was minister during Yaradua's time. Yaradua was the, the, the chairman of the Federal Executive Council. So as a member, that's all. I couldn't have been there. So that's the highest. And yes. I have done that. Mm. Rising from becoming a classroom teacher, you know, I started as classroom teacher in government college, Casey, mm. up to coming down to government college, Makodi, on deployment, up to rising through, through the ranks. I started as a level seven officer. I rose to level 16, which is principal special grade, up to becoming executive secretary. And you served 35 years uh, in, or, or uh, less? Uh, in, the, in the service. In the service. Yes, yes. I did. I served, uh, at least I served 32, 33 before I retired to become governor. governor uh, yeah, governorship uh, aspirant. That was when I retired. It's amazing how you yes. have rose mm. from grass to grace. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. sometimes I wonder <laughs> whether it was only you God blessed. <laughs> yes. No, and, I, uh, no, I know. appreciate that too. Until tomorrow, yes. I will ever remain grateful to God because after all, what again will I do? I served as a classroom teacher. I became principal special grade. I served as a member of the Association of Nigerian Authors, I rose to become national yeah, president. national president. I, I served as, as a civil servant in Benue State, I rose to become permanent secretary. I served as a politician, I rose to become a, a minister of the... There is nothing that I have served that I have not reached the top of it. I think you need my... to pray for some of us so that we can also <laughs> rise in this... No, no, that's no, my talking... prayer because mm. once you are my student, my prayer for you is that you should even rise to become more than I have become. But I have not been so, a minister before. I know, but you, you will be sometime yeah. ago because you are young, you are still coming. Yeah. The, the future is still there for you. Yeah. you know, and that's my prayer for my students. Amen. Mm -hmm. I remain. I say amen. Amen. Now, what about the palliatives? How, most of these students, have they sent palliatives to you? <laughs> <laughs> In the COVID? Uh, uh, well, yeah, the, the state is doing what it can do. I, despite the difficulties that we are experiencing here, the government has not failed in terms of payment of salaries, for instance. Mm. I think that's the best they can do. And then in terms of sending palliatives to the less privileged ones, you know, the poor, and so on, they are trying, they reach them in one way or the other. So to me, uh, I can say that the uh, government is trying and uh, it's the palliatives are reaching our people in terms of uh, getting things to the less privileged ones. They are getting them. So I'm getting my salary uh, as a civil servant, for instance. I mean, what else do you think government can do? Ordinarily, government would have, the government would have said, ah, because of the difficulties that they are experiencing in terms of money in this, and they, they will not pay, but they are paying, you know, despite. And that's why wherever I speak, I have to commend my governor because people don't know, you know, uh, it, 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 what the man is going through, but making sure that Benue State stands the way it is today. And you discover that, you know, when... How I mean, can you defend otherwise? I mean, well, don't you, were you not aware 